looking at the 10th chapter of Mark, and we'll actually finish it up today. And uh, some people would tell you that we are in a series, or we've been in a series of sermons several years ago. Uh, Dennis Burke was here one day when I made the comment, something about a series, and he said, other than the preacher, nobody understands what a series is. So uh, I'm reluctant to say that, but we're finishing up this 10th chapter. Uh, it's quite an interesting chapter in looking at the kingdom and Jesus teaching about the kingdom. And uh, as we look at that, the uh, hint has already been given through the children's lesson that we'll be looking at blind Bartimaeus today and uh, maybe a character that you may or may not have heard of before. And I understand that uh, a, a lot of people do not preach uh, about blind Bartimaeus. And obviously in reading it, it looks as though that it's talking about uh, absolutely without question of doubt that it's about physical blindness. But I'd like to flirt with that a little bit. And hopefully maybe not in this uh, monologue, but maybe later in some dialogue with some of you that, that we could uh, talk a little bit uh, about the possibility of other types of, of blindness. So with that said, listen now. It says, Jesus and his followers came into Jericho. As Jesus was leaving Jericho, that was a quick stay, wasn't it? As Jesus was leaving Jericho together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus' son, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Many scolded him, telling him to be quiet, but he shouted even louder, Son of David, show me mercy. Jesus stopped and said, call him father. They called the blind man. Be encouraged. Get up. Get up. He's calling you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, teacher, I want to see. Jesus said, go. Your faith has healed you. At once he was able to see, and he began to follow Jesus on the way. May God add for us now, not only this reading and hearing, but also some understanding of this. It's the Holy Scripture, just the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with you, please. Have I own way, Lord. Have I own way. For you are the potter. I am the clay. Amen. In the fireside stories of Mary Hollingsworth, she shares a story about a guy named Richard Rumbrin. Richard Rumbrin was in Romania at the time of the communist uh, rule there and, and literally was arrested and then placed under arrest for claiming to be Christian before when he had the opportunity to stand up, to stand up for Jesus, he literally did, and because of that, he was arrested and then put <coughs> into a basement area some 30 feet below ground, into a room with only one small light bulb, along with some other people. He wasn't there in isolation, but over time, 14 years he stayed there from 1992 when the wall came down as it's called the, the wall of communism uh, once that uh, wall from the cold war was was lowered then he was released later later Rumbrin and his wife was there in Romania and they were on a tour and they had the opportunity to tour the first ever Christian bookstore in Romania. And on this tour of the bookstore, uh, the uh, overseer or the owner, the head person of the bookstore, in meeting Rumbrin and, and 
was able to say to him, you know, I want to show you everything. I would like to show you our warehouse, which was downstairs. And unknowing to him exactly what building he was in until Rumbrin was downstairs, 30 feet into a room. And he recognized this is the room that had only one small light bulb where he had lived for 14 years. And they said all of a sudden, with his old battered feet and he could barely walk, but all of a sudden he began to dance. He began to dance across the room and around the room. He began to dance. And somebody called out to him, Mr. Rummer, what are you doing? And he said, oh, but you don't know. This is where they held me for 14 years. But now, but now, you ever wonder when you read that Bartimaeus story, what did he do? He's sitting there, and some people, most scholars actually, believe that he had been able to see before, that for whatever reason he had lost his sight. That he wasn't actually born blind. He, he left, that could be argued, and that's not for us to argue, but anyhow, he's blind, but he hears that, that Jesus of Nazareth was on his way out of Jericho. And he says, this is my chance. He's saying to himself, this is my chance. He said, I must call out to him. So he said, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Everybody turns to Hush, hush, just be quiet. Just be quiet. So now, even louder, he comes back shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops in his tracks and tells those who are with him, Call him over. Call him over. And they turned to him. And they said, Okay, you asked for it. Now's your chance. And he tells us that he threw off his coat. Or he threw his coat to the side. He threw his cloak off. Now there's a whole sermon in that thought right there. Because this is all he has. And he's thrown it down. He's blind. He wouldn't have been able to have found, found it on his own without somebody helping him. Well, you can read in from all of that. But he goes over and Jesus says, what can I do for you? You hear that? Jesus says, what can I do 